So the last time we spoke, Future Past was just about to come out, you know, and um, what I hadn't heard at that stage, there was Velvet Newton. Where'd that beast come from? That's one of the best yet. That's, um, you know what, usually um, Simon sort of, sort of comes up with some kind of melody and then it's usually this, either he's highly motivated to, he's got a lyric idea or we're pushing him. Hey, come on, Charlie, let's, and that was one track that I said, no, 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 this is an instrumental. Yeah. And the thing is, and, and everybody was like, oh, no, maybe, maybe it's a song. It could be a great song. I'm like, no, this is like, this is the overture. Yeah. And um, I would have, I mean, I would have had it open the album actually, but um, right. it's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a cracking piece, as they say. And it has a, it's, um, you know, and it's in the show every night so right. you'll 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 uh, yeah but thanks for noticing it's um it's uh you know it's got all the you know just once in a while duran does a interesting instrumental and um yeah uh, i mean it, it sort of um it struck me as the new tiger tiger especially with the fretless yeah. stuff going on you know right yeah yeah but so different so Post different. techno yeah yeah, yeah, yeah i mean really really strong i loved it and obviously the songs now have been road tested john how, how do you think the new tracks are fitting in live you must be really enjoying them you seem to be oh man i mean like i would be playing i mean it, what's hard is 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 knowing that you really can't there's only so many you can play mm -hmm. you know i wish we were playing six or seven of the new new songs but you know mostly we're doing about three um yeah. three or four uh, <laughs> if we uh, push our luck um you know but I think also, you know, it's okay. I mean, Rio features really heavily in the show this summer because it's yeah. the, because it's the anniversary of that. So, um, but you know, I mean, I mean, we've always been obsessive about the about the running order and and and, and the show and the kind of show that we're going to be playing at St Anne's Park. And people are always asking us, well, what are you, you know, what's it going to be? And and you know, and I mean. At this point, it's like, an, it's just almost an embarrassment of riches. I mean, the fact that we have, that we have as many songs that are, that, that, that got under people's skin, you know, that have meaning for so many people that we've got those songs. Those are the key cards that you can play. Um, but then, as I say, then we've got Rio. I think people have got, you know, Rio's on their minds, the album. And, um, and then we've got, you know, we've got this cross, We've got this, you know, career journey. You know, I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot of, you know, we've been we've been experimenting a bit with songs that we haven't played in a long time, and um, you know, and it's uh, it's really brought a lot of energy. Fans often debate the set list. You know, it must be so difficult. It's a beautiful dilemma. You've got to make it interesting for for fans that are coming to sh many many shows, but you've also got to make sure that you know that the people that maybe see Duran Duran once every five years, or maybe only ever once. You gotta yeah. make sure it's a really memorable experience for them and they just leave feeling entirely satisfied. No, absolutely. One thing always interests me and kind of makes me laugh a bit too about the set is that from your point of view, Rio is very often at the end. And I was thinking yeah. it's, it's such a shift on bass. It's it's almost yeah, yeah. it's almost unfair. It's like playing 20 songs at the end for you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Gotta pace myself. Roger and I, we, but it's all about pacing. You know, you you move through gears. You know, it's funny actually. We, I mean, I mean, I'm just getting, I'm getting granular now. But we did a show the other night, and uh, it was first. You know, it was a new set, and there was a lot of energy at at this at the early point of the set, and um, and then there was a pause for Simon to to chat with the audience. Yeah. And uh, and we got to the end of the song leading into that, and everybody's like, <laughs> and he forgot. Because he was he was like he was spinning, and he forgot, and we got strained, and the next song kicked off, and so we didn't have that pause, and you realise, you know, it, it it's all so the way that it's all put together. It's very it's very it's all about construction and the architecture mm. of it, and 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 the way that there are these pauses for for breaths and and these mm. gear changes, and but I love that. I love yeah. that. I find it fascinating. Rio is a baseline you've been asked about so long, and thankfully it's got lots of actual accolades now as well. 
have you have you modified it over the years, John? Is it is it slightly more economic, or are you still paying <laughs> all of those million notes? It's exactly the same. Roger and mm. I, like every every like two years, Roger and I will sort of float the idea of slowing down a couple of those, <laughs> a couple of those, you know, those like those songs. But you just can't, you know, you just can't. It's just like I think it is like uh, you know, you've just got to be able to. You know, you just got to figure out how to deliver it, you know, so it's just, you know, practice. And I mean, I practice more than I ever did, but that's probably because I play less, you right. know. Um, I have to like really, you know, take a moment to practice. But uh, no, I mean, you know, so far, so far, so good. You know, it, it, it pleases me to see so much over the years where people have realized that Duran Duran are an incredibly good live attraction. You know, it's kind of the first thing I think about now when I think about the band is that kind of enjoyment on stage and the delivery, you know? Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. I mean, I have to say for me, that's where it all comes together. Mm. You know, I know Nick, Nick is, he's from the other, he's like, it's all studio for him. It's all about the creation in the studio. And the, uh, you know, live work is almost like a, you know, something you kind of have to do. For me, it's, it all comes together on stage. That's where, you know, it's like everything that you've, it's a summing up of, of, of everything that you've learned along the way. And, um, and I love the, I love the interfacing, you know, I love the, you know, the, I love meeting the audience. I mean, I always did, man. I mean, I've just been, you know, I was thinking recently we were talking about Roxy music and, um, you know, and I, um, I talk a lot about like the first time Nick and I saw them together and um, you know, and it was turned out, into, it turned into a really quite an experience because uh, we ended up making some new friends and, you know, like meeting the band and they were the first kind of famous, their first rock stars I ever like met. And I'm like, that's the train I want to be on. It took yeah. me a little while to sort of put it together and thank God for punk rock because that 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 like opened the door, you know. <laughs> it's like we'll take anyone. You know, but, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that definitely uh you know but but like thinking about that was quite profound actually. I'm just gonna shout some songs at you that that I would call magic moments that maybe got me into the band and kept me uh, interested in what the band's output was. So we'll just fire them out fast and nothing major expected on them. But let's start with anyone out there. I know you've played yeah. that recently. Yes, yes. Um, I mean, that, that's uh, that's got the band's DNA right there. It's just a pour and mix and pour. You know, very, very fun song to play live. Um, a lot of Bowie in there. Right, I mean, Musically course. and lyrically. Right. Moving on to... Lonely in your nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> Very romantic lyric. Yeah. Very like high romantic. I was listening to that song recently, actually. I mean, it's a really great lyric. Um, you know, I, I, I find that all the, I've been listening to and talking about the Rio songs quite a bit lately. You know, it just blows my mind how well put together it is, you know, and how like everybody's playing something interesting, everybody, but nobody's mm. getting in anybody's way. You know, production mm. is really, really great. Um, I mean, it's a, you know, I mean, it's an also ran to some degree, but it's, it's definitely got, it's, oh, it's, yeah. it's, 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 a, it's an interesting one. That. It's a great song. Uh, moving on, I was going to, had to toss a coin for this one. I was going to go Secret October or Winter Marches On and Winter Marches mm -hmm. On came out. What about that one? Yeah, I mean, that was um, late night at uh, their studios in London. You know, it was uh, definitely um, a little bit, a little bit out there. It had a, you know, an unusual time, sort of time signature mm. for us. Um, I mean, interestingly, Nile did a complete remodeling on the original. The the, the, the original uh, music that was that the Simon Nick and I put together. I'd almost be quite interested to hear the original, the, the original demo. Mm -hmm. um, but so that's that's a beauty for me. Uh, none of the above from the wedding album, especially the midsection. 
Yeah, I mean, there's so many. I mean, non. I mean, the wedding album to some extent is so all over the place, and um, we're still, you know, we're very much in the current, you know, so much music, particularly in England, rave culture is going on, you know, and acid jazz, and you know, there's a bit of the Happy Mondays almost in there, you know. And 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 I think I think like you know a little bit of like guy in there, mm. you know mm. we were we, you know we were, we were still clubbing, you know we were still going and appreciating music on that kind of club level and just trying to bring it all. There's a lot of it's a real mix up uh, to me. Ordinary uh, the wedding album is just like so many different possible possible directions. Mm. Uh, of course, like ordinary world, come and done. They're the winners. Yeah. But you know that you know none of the above is just one of those one of those tracks that's kind of it's kind of cool. You know, when you listen to it, you think, ah, you know what? Maybe we should do this one of these days. Mm. But it's it's such fun. All you need is now that the song. All you need is now. What a chorus! I find I go through. There's there's that there's that period where you've just written it and you're just like, you, you're not objective about it. You're just like telling yourself, this is the best thing we've ever written. This is the best <laughs> album we've ever made. And you're, yeah. you know, you're, and you're in that head because you're trying to sell it, you know? And then next to it, you don't even want, you don't want to play anything from that album. Do you know what I mean? You're yeah. just like, we've been playing it, playing it, and you just like park it. Yeah. And then it usually takes like some remastering or some, some kind of recontextualizing of, either a specific song or the album as a whole, for for me at least, to kind of come back and go, oh, okay, that's interesting. You know, I always sort of felt like we kind of built it on that crazy synth line. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I'm like, you know what, that is so ridiculous. Let's build a song build a song about around it. Yeah. But it but it was it was a tricky, it was tricky. You know, it was a tricky mm-hmm. riff to to sell. Um, it's almost like a song in two parts, really, because obviously yeah. the, the 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 you know the lyric and the vocal are one song in a way, and the music is something else. But sure, I, I love them. Um, love the way in the middle it just for the course it just seems to open out. You know, it's, yeah. it comes down yeah. this narrow channel and then just goes wide. Yeah, which I really yeah, like. Yeah. But from Paper Gods, my favorite track is Only in Dreams. Yeah, it's a big one. That was a big, big. Uh, I mean, you've got a lot, a, cali- a lot of ideas going on there. You know, it's, um, you know, there's, you know, it was, it was, it was one of the two songs that we wrote with Niall. So you had the, so there was, it was built on like a funk chassis, if you like. Yeah. Um, but you know, we had to sort of find, you know, Nick did a lot of, a lot of. Um, sonic architecture on that you know he really spent a lot of time building it up um yeah i mean you know and again that's another beauty and we played it like every night for two years and then mm. you know I, I haven't listened to it since but yeah you know. final one john and have i left the best to last i don't know it's obviously very recent but um laughing boy now that is right up there yeah i mean it was um you know, we tend to work in, um, we almost work in like building blocks, you know, we'll find a, we'll just find a, we'll find a jam, find a groove that works. Everybody's feeling like we could just, we could just play this for hours. And often we do. And we're just going around and around. And everybody's just refining their parts and we get this, we get this part. And then, you know, and then we come back to it and we go, okay, we need a, we need a second part. That that musically, that was that was a piece that was sitting around for quite a while, probably a year before before vocally, um, Simon really knew what it was, and um, you know, and it was just you know, sometimes you can be sitting on a piece of music with like a vocal idea, a wordless vocal idea. And and like Nick and I will be saying to Charlie, like, well, what about if it's about this? What about if it's about that? And Charlie will be saying, like, listen, I know what I'm doing, okay? Shut <laughs> up, shut up, leave it to me. And we're like, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. And then and then finally, you know, he'll say, 
he'll, he'll call the producer and say, I want to work on that track. And, uh, you know, I mean, it came in so late, that one. It didn't make the, um, you know, it was a, that's why it's like a bonus track. Mm. Uh, but I think, sure. um, but, um, yeah, a lot of people are liking that one. All the best for the rest of the tour. Look forward to catching up soon. Thank you, John.